Definitely agree there. We'll see if they do try and target him in the champion select here. First off the bat is going to be some hard engage, taking away that Malphite. Yep, he's gone away there, so not going to have that here as Payne. Do pick a ban. It's Gangplank, very common ban here in Paris. Is an almost insta ban from CLG. Going to take out the Darius. Yep, Juggernaut's falling left and right. Lulu may be left open. Actually has a lot lower win rate than we expected here, that Lulu pick overall. Let's see if they actually bait CLG to picking it. Also, to keep your eye on junglers, because Elise seen a lot of favor here. Early drops, early picks for that champion very, very often. Yeah, Smithy is so good with a lot of the Cinder Hulk junglers, though. I don't think that CLG would be too sad about giving it up. That being said, yes, Elise is on the board, so they won't give away the first pick to CLG. Not anymore. They just banned it out here, Elise off the table so pain gaming even though it's yeah as you said you know very very big on the cinder hulk junglers just don't want to deal with that uh cocoon throwing menace yeah there is something it's so interesting about smithy because he spent so much money on just individual wards uh in the early stages of the game uh and then and that delays his sight zone but it sets up the first stages of the vision to set up for the rest of the team and he has to be on something safe to get that first line down well Unfortunately, Kreppo is not going to get his wish, at least ah. for this game. Kami's Twisted Fate was the final ban there for CLG as Payne, with 15 seconds left to decide what they want to take away. We've talked a lot about priority picks. We've seen Mordekaiser banned 100% yep. of the time. This may be the first Mordekaiser, oh, but no. Nope. Not yet. Pain gaming, even must yeah, hurt. It must the hurt. Brazilians, <laughs> they got there. But you have to uh, ban it out. Lou is open right now, and I'm looking at Braum. Even though the champion has a surprisingly low win rate, I think it might even be as low as zero so far in the tournament. Somebody tweet that at me, so I have to double check. But Braum, the tier one pick, zero and eight. Uh, our stats guy, Sultry, whispers in my ear just now. So zero and eight so far for Braum. So coming into the tournament, it was top pick, top ban. Suddenly, just doesn't work anymore for these teams. Yeah, I mean, still, still a strong champion. Um, the record here also could be just because everyone prioritizes him, both the teams that are strong and the teams that are not. Anyways, though, he's not going to be uh, first round priority here. CLG did get their hands on that Lulu, so that does signify a, a play style here for CLG. It did work out for them before, you know, double lift uh, on some sort of end game carry there. Last time using Jinx, this time. We'll see what they go for. And it does play into probably that Poe Belter uh, Lulu mid, so he can run that, run that low econ mid laner. So Kami not on an assassin this time, but picks the Orianna. We've seen that matchup play out. It's just what Lulu does decently well in lane, Orianna just does better. And that's why this matchup actually propels forward for the Orianna. We saw Xpeka do it too, stay even, managed to build very offensively, didn't have to get any defensive items, and then landed that four man shockwave. But obviously, some setup is required. Still possible here to do the same thing for Pain Game. And Callista's open, Annie is open. Yeah, plus, you know, this is a signature champion for Kami. Uh, the Orianna has been playing it for so long. Sir T also very happy. So, comfort picks here yeah. for uh, Brazil right off the bat. Well, big players going to need to make some big plays on the champion. A CLG consider their next few picks here, looking for second and third in this draft. 10 seconds now. And CLG, after the Instalock, Lulu have really slowed things down. There's the least in there for X Smithy. And we may see Braum could get his first win here in the World Championships. Again, though, no hard TC. And a lot of these lineups in these, in these games here at the World Finals have been looking great on paper. But then you realize if there's no target at the hard TC, these teams are so good that they can play around that. That may be the start of your demise. So I need to see if either of these teams actually pick some target TC. Think of an Annie, think of any lockdown immediately it can help you facilitate these fights. And we have seen, you know, with Origin earlier today, the combos, the AOE combos, the massive impact they can have with just a single team fight. If you win uh, a giant shockwave or something like that, you know, you set up with Annie. Speaking of Origin, this was the exact combo that they ran as well. They could be looking to pull the same thing off on CLG. Look at Crepo, the prophet there, predicting the Annie collection. I mean, I'm not a prophet. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just looking at Origins game overall here. Yeah. Pain Gaming, they were in the studios. They were getting ready for the game too. It's like, that looks like a good composition. Let's run it. We'll see how it works out here for Pain. As they've got one pick left in this draft, we pop back over to Counter Logic Gaming. Really picked a lot of strong utility. Can flex the Lulu if they want to. So they need to complete the draft mm. of these picks. And it's Tristana Olaf that they settle on. Yeah, speaking of the Juggernaut, you know, Lulu, you need 
Uh, not only the AD carry for the late game, but also some sort of other threat in that top lane to speed up. Olaf is perfect. This was the original combo used in North America quite a lot. And I this, however, we do, we don't, sorry to interrupt you there, but this is actually a throwback to All-Stars where yep. the French casters in-house would always ask the crowd, Spartans, what is your profession? And they would go nuts. They're and they doing actually, it right now. They're Let's doing it go. right now. Shut your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Let him hear you. I, I ships and oil are yeah. going crazy already, so it's a good throwback here from the youth French player here in uh, Paris. <laughs> like, but to touch back on the actual things at hand, I yeah. think OF here is a fantastic pick. I love it with Lulu. I love it against these hard engage, these hard stunts. He can just run down Kalista. Yeah, also, I mean, this CLG comp is really, really high intensity mid game here. Tristana can get them to that point where they have enough money to start grouping and roaming around, knock down turrets very, very quickly, because you put up the Braum wall, and then Tristana, just one explosive charge is going to take out at least half a turret there. Yep. So they're going to look to try and chain that early gold uh, and then get Zion once you get one item on Olaf. Uh, he's backed up by a Lulu. He can just try and run train. Yeah, no, it does complete the draft there for Payne, surprisingly popular pick here in the first two days of the World Championships. Remember, this is our final game of the evening as we get a little further through these groups as the teams play more games. But, gentlemen, the draft has completed. Yeah, really looking forward to see what CLG does with this game. Pain Gaming do have a tendency to go incredibly long in their games and then facing off against a sped up OF late game, a Tristana hyper carry potential Zeke's on the brown. That's going to be hard to deal with for Pain Gaming. I've learned something in the last two games, though, Crepo. Let's not start talking about the team fights. Let's talk about that level one. Yeah, <laughs> let's go back. Let's talk. doesn't matter. Who's so, going to face it? Whom? It's, it's not yet. Yeah, it's not if they face check five it's on five where? level one. <laughs> exactly. It's going to be where do they go and who's going to have the advantage. Because once again, they do have the same bottom Probably range. Probably to Annie. And exactly. The Annie can charge up her W, also obviously the incinerate in the fountain on the way there to get the AOE stun. But Braum, no slouch. Olaf. If they see one person out, they also have the Olaf. So a lot, nice. of, a lot of ability to chase down if CLG do sort of get the momentum that they get the first jump in that level one. Uh, definitely something to watch out for. But again, we've seen the effect of the AoE from Annie if they face check a brush. And more importantly, double teleport on both these sides here. So we can see explosive bot lanes. We could also see a complete snooze farm fest if they respect the teleports. Depends what these teams bring to the table. Well, we'd like to know what you guys are at least thinking. Who are you calling this one for? Tweet at LOL Esports with the hashtag CLG Winter Cheer for the North Americans or for PNG Winter Cheer for the Brazilians. And we'll see who you guys are backing in our final game of the evening. The uh, French cast are doing an excellent job of hyping up the crowd. They're going insane right now, if you can hear them. And again, a tight game here for both teams. We would have thought maybe, you know, just a, C a standard CLG game, but after seeing the last few games of the first two days, a very tight final game of day two. Yeah, we had a tiny problem with BRTT's mouse, but it should be resolved, so we should be able to get into games soon enough here. So yeah, I'm excited. This could mean just so much uh, yeah. for this group, for these teams. Pain Gaming could cause the upset here, because after all, they're still, they're the dwarf in this group. Nobody expects them to almost take any games, but yeah, they have proven that they can get relatively close. And you talked about that bottom lane. I'm yeah. still very excited to see it. It's only added to that that there's so... Like, every single person in this map can join the bottom lane. I wish these te teleports could be disabled for, like, 10 minutes because the, the, just in a 2v2 isolated yeah. spectrum, Tristana, Braum into Annie Kalista is such a fascinating matchup, mostly because you can flash Q aggressively as Braum, but it never happens. Do you even play bottom lane? You know it's not 2v2. It's always at least 4v2, 5v3. Well, it's, al that, it's always 2v4, 2v5. I yeah. never get any TPs. And now 5v5, as we do have an invade from CLG. Welcome onto the Rift for our final game of what's, day two here in Paris. What's their team? A lot of teams have been doing this. They double ward, send their jungle out to bait, illusion that there's just scouting, and then they run into... Oh, oh. somebody again! Level up to the You know, something talking about team fights too early, Crepo. You gotta touch on those level ones, baby. We're, we're almost back to the preseason dragon spawning. Everybody rushed Everybody down there. Everybody get to that but brush. It's exactly what we prepped here. The Annie in the brush. Zion throws his axe at Sir T because they saw him. They thought Poe yep. Belter was the one pulling off the bait. They thought Poe Belter was distracting him and they were gonna get the jump on him. But defensive wards from Pain. Annie in the brush. They didn't throw the axe at the brush because he thought they had the target in sight and Zion paid the price. But Pain Gaming were so happy that they got one kill that they forgot 
they didn't realize, well, guys, we just used all our damage. And then CLG, they pulled the trigger. It's actually very, very audacious of them to do that, being one man down and still getting two kills with them. So good game read here overall. But I love that play, and I think we'll see less of that later as the tournament goes on. Because that Surti was given the illusion that they were spread out, scouting, because he was just hovering around, acting, you know, Oscar to him for that first spot. But Pain Gaming, they were looking in that brush. But enough about level one. Let's get to the game. I don't know, one more thing though, the follow that <laughs> the Braum pass is doing so much work there with the Q he's so strong in the level ones. Now they meet up in the two versus two up top, and Pain do have the advantage with the minion wave shoving already. Cobelter though getting the early zone onto Kami. He's got the early level two. Look at his wards though. He bought two wards immediately. Okay. Yeah, wards very important because so many flashes were blown. You mentioned that, you know, it was very risky for Pain, you know, stick around after you know getting that first blood. They had to burn a lot of exit flashes. Kami in the mid lane, uh, Mylon up top. It's the two solo lanes that Lee Sin is going to be looking for. Smithy, not only is he on one of the best early game ganking junglers, one of the most mobile, as soon as he hits level three, he's got everything he needs in his kit, but he also still has his flash as well. And he's now going to take a blue buff here. Ooh, Sentinel just missing that there. I think you may as well not cast Sentinels because they're so deceptive because you constantly think, oh, we didn't see the jungle, but you know, what jungler at this level is going to get walk in and get caught by it? Unless it randomly turns around right here. It's going to kill it now. He no, 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 getting, no, no. He's getting his attack speed. Yeah, he could have gone up there. Why would uh, he kill it? Well, Engel, get man. Come on, but now they know where you are. <laughs> didn't, well, didn't want to go for the kink up top. <laughs> well, do you see standard lanes in effect here? Uh, because you never know uh, if Rek'Sai is waiting there as well, because they have Tremor Sense. They could be you know, prepping a counter gank for you. If any gets an AoE stun off on level two, level three champions. You're right. I yield. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I had just begun. They've been going absolutely bonkers here in the mid lane. Pobelter and Kami, we talked, we heard Kami talk about the matchup. They are really fighting each other in these early levels. Just on the bottom lane too, that Nar OF matchup. Traditionally, Nar propels ahead of these uh, Juggernauts because he can keep the distance the same way and he can just kept, keep hitting you repetitively. However, Oa finding an axe can change that entirely and swing that around. So yeah. very interesting matchup in, overall. Yeah, in this matchup, I actually really like Olaf, as long as the Olaf has some support. Because he can all in on a mini Nar pretty easily. Just continue to pick up axes. Since the long lane, there's so much distance for him to work with. If you're good at throwing the axes, you just throw it to land on the model of your enemy. Then you can immediately pick it up and you can chain those. If there's some support from the jungler, from the mid lane, you know, all these teleports that we're talking about, um, then Olaf, he can pick and choose when to have the engage. Well, top lane not going too badly now. Pretty even, but Kami struggling. 10 CS done already and used his teleport. Yeah, Poe Belter in that mid lane. Make a name for himself. It's her T. Uh, Pings to brush here. No wards there for CLG. Pobelter just used one teleport, so if Sir T can get behind. He actually pink warded too, yep. so very invested in the top lane gank here for Pain Gaming. I do definitely agree with you, by the way, on your earlier point about the uh, Sentinels. Uh, I think people overhype the, oh, we're moving around the Sentinel. It's, it's pretty slow, <laughs> easy to maneuver around. It just gives you so much deceptive vision, because what does it grant you? You walk into the jungle, oh, we didn't see the jungle. Yeah, well, he's going to walk around that. Yeah, it's Miffy now. Gets spotted on the jungle oh, right there. Oh, Braun passive honor as well. BOTT could be in trouble, but double it actually gets out of the way. So he's actually not here anymore. We've seen junglers on opposite sides of the map, but the 2v2, what Kami wanted or what he's team wanted, they are getting it. Zion goes in aggressive. He actually gets the worst of that trade here. Mylon. Oh, he ran into the back swing on the boomerang. It's not getting He's a lot of mileage. With it. That's it's not getting a lot of mileage ah. out of those axes here. He's he revealed again on the ward. This is the second time that same ward has spotted him. So, yeah. fool me once, and I'll. I'm not gonna do that saying on air. I, I, I always screw it up. <laughs> we've certainly seen it. Shame on X Smithy, TLDR. <laughs> <laughs> we've certainly seen X Smithy be fairly committed to the Zion uh, ganks early on. So, paying a lot of attention there. Oh, do you face checking? Oh, not good news. Braun passive. Not quite there. And this top lane, in so many ways, is very volatile. Yep, again, love this defensive ward in their uh, tri bush. They do see it coming, Gone but their team immediately goes in. Yeah, kind of hard with that. Good warding, actually, from CLG to spot that one out. So many inter interesting dynamics in, in this lane. Obviously, you have the double range to ask from BFT and uh, the Utes Annie, but at the same time, they have to posture consistently. They have to stand behind creeps because if they get connected, Ooh. Mylon really doesn't like those creeps, it seems. So he just wants, he actually just wants to push in them base. That's why he uses ulti. Yeah. But uh, Xmiffy, round three, third time's a charm. Ding, ding. 
<laughs> nope, well, same ward, same ward. But he's so far deep. Can Zion land an axe? Did he hit it? I don't think he did. Milo nah. needs to land this up well. Can he get the hop? He gets the boomerang. He's going to get aggressive. Great Q from X Smithy. But there's the hop to get him to safety. Yeah. As a jungler, efficiency. Go away. <clears throat> no comment. You can. <laughs> walking over the same ward three times, Crepo, I think you can do the math on that one. <laughs> well, let's check in with the rest of the lanes now then. Seeing Top X Smith, he can't quite get the ganks down. I think this is being stuck in, in play patterns outside of, like, with normal level ones in mind. Obviously, that ward, that lasted three minutes. There's no way that was a trinket ward, but the Smithy in his mind is like, okay, he, got, he spotted me, trinket ward. Minute later, it'll be gone. Ah, unlucky, it was still up. Minute later, it has to be gone by now, but it was actually a green ward due to the explosive level one, so it changes a lot of these early game dynamics. And the thing is, you can go for those ganks where you just run over the ward, even if you know it's yeah. there, but you just want to run over it. Be but for that to work, you have to have very good setup good with, your, with your top laner because Zion was so low, it was so dangerous for him to start that up with the axe and try and get close to Nar because Nar could easily do enough damage to turn it around on them. Afro and double here, no ward anymore. Yo, yeah, Mylon almost gets knocked out of it. The stun's gonna go down though. Afro does land it up, but he doesn't have an ulti. Damage is good, they get a flash oh, forward. Nice Ignite nice. should do it. Mylon, Mylon why didn't you flash any earlier? Really good delayed Ignite there from Afro. Afremu. Yeah, Zion Smithy can't get it done. Double lift and Aframu will take over. Same path taken down the river. Ward finally has expired, and they're able to get the turret. The turrets will trade, but COG got the extra kill out of it. And this leaves Pobelter all alone in the mid lane. We're so focused on the sideline uh, and the ganks that both junglers have concentrated on the opposite sides of the map, but all the time the junglers are showing gives more time for Pobelter to isolate this matchup with Kami, where he's increasing his minion lead and taking so much health off of the turret. Now we're swapping things around here. You can see Tower's getting low both in the other side. CLG already took one in the bottom side. x trying to defend here in the top of BATT. And dude, the French player on the Brazilian side trying to make it happen as Pobelter's also been applying quite a bit of pressure. Yeah, yeah, here's the roam from Aphromoo. Hex into right the all. Oh. good as well. Double lift is there. Shockwave does not connect. That was some really well executed play there. Kami had his flash, but he couldn't do it because he was polymorphed. Then he got knocked up by the Brahman. Even if he flashed later on, double lift comes in. That tower going down, that is a big, big swing here for Counter Logic Gaming. What time is it, Crapo? It's rush hour, baby! <laughs> <laughs> he actually looked at his watch, by the way. <laughs> they just like, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't see how this information is relevant to, to you, Kobe. But... <laughs> they just made a play, bottom side, grab the kill for their team, swing mid, not only get the kill, but also, since Pobelter had done so much work on that mid turret, they open up the map. The all-important mid turret down, they're able to get the deep vision, Rush Hour doing so much for CLG this yeah, game. CLG at 10 past 10 in the evening right now. 16,000 <laughs> gold against 13k of main gaming. Let's Five, see that again. Just watch technically. What's the volume more from Full Belter here? The into that knockup. That is some CC chain. I love that. The support main. This makes me very, very happy. And the Shockwave, of course, fizzling there towards the end. Really tight play there from CLG. And they're up 3,000 gold already at 10 minutes in. We talked about CLG can have strong early games despite good late game. And they've had a really good start to this one. Yeah, and if this tower, I, I don't think Pain Gaming really, they over-respected CLG here. That tower should have dropped a lot earlier. Now, good zoning here from Smithy and Zion Spartan. They yeah. really want to deny that gold, even if it's just a local gold. I guess the Pain Gaming, especially when his matchup sports switches back, Double right now has the breaking point in this Kalista matchup. She's not yet finished Bork, but she's going up against the BF and a pickaxe. That's her double lift can just get so much instant damage done. And yeah, start 1v1ing the enemy carry, 2v2 they win too. So really, really big breaking point here for CLG. You can see how active Aphromo and Smithy are being now as well. Trying to add to that all here. There's mobility boots very early on, but Afro getting him around the map. And even Home Guard upgrade on him. He's getting out there to make plays. Certainly is there as Payne. Do pick up the tower in top lane there. Gonna move that gold a little back, a little closer back to even. But Poe Belter has been such a bully here in this lane as well. He is very far ahead of Kami, almost 20 CS clear right now. Yeah, we mentioned it earlier, level one, all flashes blown, two wards, purchase constant shot from Pole Belter, the easiest way to lost it, forcing Kami to make mistakes under that turret, dropping CS. Yeah. Again, it's not much, it's 10 CS, but it means a lot in terms of pressure too. Pole Belter is always ready to move first. So here's the line that you now take as Pain Gaming. We want to look at this match from their point of view, they need to clear out this CLG deep vision. You know that CLG were just in your jungle. You know that they left wards down here, and CLG are a team that in the past 
have gotten overconfident when they get this far ahead. They've gotten early leads so often that sometimes they get a little overconfident with trying to take multiple objectives at once because CLG are a team that strive to be really efficient with the amount of objectives they're taking at the same time. If Payne can actually defensively ward, then maybe they can use this anti calissa to try and pick somebody off and try and get a comeback rolling. Well, you can see CLG a very quick dragon here in this game as they do take the first one. Yep, do take the first one there. Two and up in turrets as well, sort of padding that lead out here as Payne will move themselves down to this bottom side. Yeah, Surti found that pink ward in his own jungle, he replaced it with a pink ward of his own. He received the Ud and Surti moving in, gets warded out though by Spartan, but they want to get that tower down. Gonna see a likely tower trade. This is where Mayo has to be careful. If you see the enemy top lane in his own of his tower, likely that the same thing will happen to you. So get the hell out of dodge, try and farm some jungle at best, but get away from that turret. Oh, well, Zion might have to pop his ultimate here. Let's see if they force it out of him. Just gonna take the hits. Yep, the RTT kind of knew that he couldn't continue there, so they'll try and take the tower instead. Double if though. We've seen this a lot from Tristana. Mows down turrets with the spells in the early game. Pain will get one in the bottom side, but CG are about to take another. Yeah, early tier 2 boots here on, on uh, BRTT too, so he'll delay his Blade of the Wood King even more. Uh, struggling to stay even here. Pain Gaming, they do have some elements of hard car control effects, like the Annie Tibbers, like the knockup provided from uh, Fate Skull. So, Teams that fall behind without any of this hard to see have an incredibly hard time coming back, but Pain Gaming still have the tools to close this gap, just like Kobe mentioned, if CLG follow up on that tendency to get slightly overconfident in the mid game. Oh, really splitting the map at this point. CLG are finally going to chase Pain out of their red side jungle. Get after him, Udo. Good flank here. Oh, the ball's actually caught him. Now they're going to keep moving through. Great ultimate. It pulls out with the fight skull. Truck wave does land on a few. But Double has already gotten a kill. They'll trade back and forth. Zir T will die. Now the reset here for Double. He's going to keep jumping. Two for one there. CLG win that fight. Three for one, sorry. Yeah, three for one exchange here. CLG flanking Pain Gaming. The face call wasn't enough. Immediate ultimate there from Aphromo 2. And yeah, they just got caught. There was no way they were going to win that fight. That fight. So cut your losses. Q flash kick. Kirby in trouble. Does die to Zion Spartan. His ex Smithy goes full and A on the least in plays. Yeah, so doesn't they're even... definitely going to be able to finish off this turret. Yeah, doesn't even leave me time to finish my point. Damn you, ex Smithy. <laughs> Still got the least in mechanics. Certainly on lockdown, a CLG only getting further ahead in this game. Almost 5,000 gold now. CLG, we're going to see if they can continue momentum. X Smithy on the aggressively sin, the warrior done. Infinity Edge must be here as we do have a replay. Yeah, so let's look at this chase because Aphromu, yeah, he's going to sacrifice his life because he goes right in the middle of the team, but he lays out the carpet here. And uh, even through Kami's ultimate, the shockwave hitting, CLG just power through Zansarn on the front lines. Double lift doesn't hesitate to jump in over the shockwave. Yeah, that ultimate there from Aphromu was certainly even flashed into it. He tried to escape and then he found a Brahma at the other side. The should have probably just halted himself over the wall, making it a one for two because that was an unwinnable fight, even in a five-man shockwave. Yeah. Uh, also, there. I'm pretty sure that that was before the shopping uh, from Kami, and he hadn't completed his Athenes. He was sitting on just the rings and the chalice there, so not a lot of AP to back it up yet. And speaking of items, as we do see blue buff over for Poe Belter, Infinity Edge is done for Jinx. We've got the Need to See Large Rod now for Lulu and the Black Cleaver for Zion Spartan. So CLG is starting to power up in this mid game. And if you're a starting NAR player, you can also see why Mylon here goes for the Black Cleaver instead of throws him out. Eventually throws him out, won't be useful against an Olaf at all. So you just want to shred that armor, try and kill him before he runs you down. But at this point, Zion Spartan is just in a good spot, he's still behind the CS, but the kills and assists make it so that he's relatively even, and CLG will always have a member defending him, assisting him. They're playing way better as a team right now compared to Pain Gaming. And the Tristana Siege, what we've seen from CLG, quite a lot in their ascendance to number one in North America in summer. They're going to keep trying to Siege down. They've got four turrets already. Going to be working on this bottom one. It's down to about 30% health already. I honestly just very impressed with the way Paul Walter has been playing here so far. Uh, yeah, he got, he got Lulu twice, uh, which is relatively straightforward champion to play, but he has done incredibly high kill participation in a lot of these games. I think yesterday he was involved in literally every kill. So far, 7 out of 8. Not only that, he's also won his lane both times on Lulu. Certainly impressive there, Kami. He said he wanted to play him. Maybe he regrets that statement now, but Payne still putting up a fight here, defending this bottom side turret. Mylon sticking in the top side. Does not have his teleport, though. 
But CLG look to be prepping just for the next dragon. CLG will clean out this wolf camp. Actually getting a bit more active around the map, trying to keep these waves up. But Dragon is back up in 40 seconds. Pain needs to make a decision. When that comes up, are they going to fight for it? I think not. Uh, because they, honestly, we talk about, you know, trying to set up defensive vision all the time. And we talk about clearing out CLG's vision. Even that is such a dangerous prospect for them. Really what they're hoping for at this point is a counter engage where CLG try and push into a turret. Uh, something along those lines where they're walking in and it makes it easy for Kami to land a very big shockwave. And ever since Baron has been placed on a 20 minute start time except the 15 minutes, some teams have actually found issues closing out games or knowing what to do when they get this far ahead and towers fall this early in the game. So CLG's approach right now is just to deny as many Mini objectives, yep. small jungle camps, vision trades, dragons to boot, and then just keep the pressure up. And then eventually, around 20, 25 minutes, then you can start looking for that Baron. But there is no rush at all here uh, on CLG. And that was, that's what makes it so hard for, for Ping Gaming to find an opening. Unless they push and overextend mid, it's so hard to catch him. At the beginning of the season, it took a long time for teams to realize uh, that you can't just continually throw your bodies at this inner line of turrets because that's how you give up your early yep. leads, overextending in that new game. Deny resources, raptors to prevent the oracle buff right there, the wolves so that little uh, spirit doesn't spawn, and then you go back to your jungle, get some more gold, and then you continuously keep growing that gold advantage, and then you can start throwing your bodies <laughs> at those tier 2 towers. CLG are certainly starting to pack that snowball. I think they've got to the top of the hill, they're going to push it down now and see how big it can get. 5,000 gold up still, but they did take another dragon, so on the clock now for a pretty good fifth dragon timer. Now sitting 2-0 up in dragons and 4-2, four, uh, four, sorry, up in turrets. The items do keep coming. Pobelter and Mylon kind of just sort of brush past each other. Mylon will complete the back, but Pobelter even is clearing waves bottom side now on Lulu. The advantage of double teleport, you know, you can just put your mid laner bot, AD carry mid. That's a lot of teams used to be able to do in the assassin meta. Even if you don't have an assassin, you just split push, 1-3-1. One, one. Keep that pressure up and eventually... Pain Gaming, because they're losing all these individual matchups right now, 1v1, 2v2, they have to send more people to deal with one side. That's when teleport transfers over to the other side of the map. And you yet get another advantage. It's an objective, vision, whatever you want. CLG seems to be more in control in this mid game than they were yesterday. Yeah, definitely. It's it's up to Pain right now to try and find some fight with a numbers advantage. Because while we keep mentioning the double teleports for both teams, and yeah, you know, people can join from across the map, the channel time for teleport is extremely long, and you can burst someone out before yep. they arrive. So trying to even it up that way is what they're looking for. They've got the Annie to start it all off. That would be their number one hope. And that's something. Hang on oh, here. That's a little deep there. Smithy gets low, but he flashes out to safety. And that's something we've seen on Western teams as well. That teleport, very often a little late. Very often when we watch the, the Eastern teams, the both LPL and LCK, those teleports coming really early, very often cancelled when unnecessary, but I feel that's very something where Western teams need to improve a lot more, just trigger or, happy on teleports. Or not cancelled like we saw last game with Smith. <laughs> Two. Let's see, Pobelts are working on Mylon. So much damage already in the Lulu. Hasn't even gotten that second big item. He's actually going to take this maybe by himself. Yeah, no pressure there coming out from Annie. CLG, again, very methodically, just getting themselves a bigger and bigger lead. This, like we've mentioned already, much more control from CLG, even stealing the blue now as well. This, 20 minutes in, it's been a great early game, but a very clean mid game now as well. Oh, interesting teleport here from Zion Spartan. Looking to cut him off. He pops the ultimate. Find someone. It's actually coming in 13. The knock up there from Lulu. Huge damage out there from Zion. Smithy rides in to get the kill and does secure it. That teleport only went, you know, halfway across the jungle, but he was just able to cut off Kami there. And not even the flash is going to save him. COG jump on the opportunity, finally catch Pain Gaming outside of their base, and now they're going to Baron bait. Yep, CLG copying TSM with their Juggerloft composition here. We see Spy Spartan again, no ultimate this time though. And then Aphromu does not have his. They're going to need to find someone. Mylot's flashed out. Smithy looking for the flame, but it gets knocked up. That's not enough. BRTT now is a 4v4. Will ensue. Mylot, good scoop back to keep himself safe. But Aphromu will get the kill and double. Smells blood there as he rocket jumps straight forward. Good move by Payne. If you're getting flanked, always engage on the weak side of the flank. They take out Smithy, but. And they're just forced to end up training one for one. So CLG is making moves that at worst go even. So very, very controlled aggression here from CLG. Yeah, yeah, it could have been better from Smithy there. You do have to constantly keep track of the rest of your squad when you're going for a flank so it doesn't get turned around on you like that. Here comes the stun on the beard. Quite. If only Pixie passive fucks out two oh, autos. That would be ridiculous. <laughs>
as CLG will back away from their seat in the mid lane. Mylan is back, so you have to be a bit more careful as everyone can be around here, but the control out of CLG for Vision, you can see them just massacring wards in Payne's red side jungle. Yeah, plus they've got the trifecta of pink wards around Baron already set up. Uh, to clear out so much of this true sight uh, inside the red. And look at just how dark pain. that vision is. Pain Gaming now have to face like all those brushes that are being shown by the observers here. For all they know, CLG is right now on Baron with a 2,000 health Baron buff. They find him in the brush though. Sorti, good scouting, that's really good job, but you gotta go with patience. And CLG know that now Pain Gaming, they took their time scouting those rushes. Next time, they'll just insta rush Baron. But, you know, they've given up the positioning here on the mid lane and Pain trying to get towards the turret. They are half-heartedly coming over. It looks like Soji have just forfeited this mid lane turret. So Pain Gaming is going to take the last outer now. Yeah, might pay for that Baron Bay with a turret. They certainly will, as Pain Gaming have done a great job playing reactively, but sort of keeping up with CLG. This lead has not shifted for so long. Well, they have to be careful. CLG will seed one turret, but they're not going to let two go. So Pain have to be careful not to overextend. Yeah, but look at the wave in bottom lane, though. Just done a dodge the here from X Smithy. He has to go in. Good zoning by Sirti. Oh, Good castle! Nearly enough. So low here as they do tag Kami. They're going. Shockwave left on the three. Doubles caught up. Fade Skull's going to move in. And he's down there as well. Zion has got Oriana into the back line. And Zion is going absolutely nuts. They're trying to kill PRTT. He will die, but Mylon will fall as well. Mylon was way too late. Pain Gaming needed to communicate better as a team what they want to do. They could have turned that around if Mylon TP'd instantly. But right now, double lift looking to clean oh, up PRTT. does fall to double lift. And CLG find themselves a three for two team fight win. Again, that three and a half seconds of channel time for a teleport is enough to turn the tide. I mean, the three and a half hesitation before the channel is. <laughs> that's not. That's a, the lag. <laughs> lag. Playing at lab. It's the only lag you have left is teleport lag. But yeah, really good turnaround there from Pain Gaming, but they were in a good position to also keep split pushing. So Myelin told his team, guys, I got a free tower here, just back off. They could have backed off. Good cancel from Sir T, but. Hesitation. Obviously really easy to spot from us here, but it's all happening in real time for those guys on the stage, so gotta keep in control. That's why shot calling is so important for these teams. Yeah, and sometimes you want to put faith in your team that they'll be able to disengage so you can try and get an advantage and you continue split pushing bottom. If they're able to pull off that disengage and deny CLG the uh, combo there, then by taking that risk, they gain something on the other side of the map. Well, Payne actually gonna start this Dragon CLG a little late on the recalls. <laughs> they might not get this next Dragon. PRT Tilo caught! Kami will protect him there with his ball. Flying from Zion Spartan. Oh, Zion runs in. Rek'Sai does get it. Payne will get the Dragon, but at what cost there is Kalista already down. Kami getting fired upon by Double if just going nuts. As now Mylon gonna get aggressed on the stun is there for Manny. That should be Baron. Uh, the two main carries here for Pain Gaming down. So CLG should probably make a beeline up there. As we said, they have plenty of pink wards already down. Yeah, I really like that vision. Uh, they're, they're just setting between Explosive Inhibitor and Baron right now. Yeah, they're just pick what you want. Only only good choices left for CLG right now. Pobolta wasn't even in, that fight, even in that fight, and you really see. Just a, a little bit of aggression from the Kalista forcing her down, and then Zion Spartan can just move in, flank. And it's so hard for Pain Gaming to move in, because even though CLG stopped baiting, those pink wards, they stay there. They don't go down anymore. Unlimited duration on those wards. And you just see a steal here from Sir T, but just so hard. Caught Afro. In fact, Zion's going to try and zone them away. Does not have his ultimate just yet, so this could be a bit dangerous. Baron getting low, but it feels like CLG want to commit on this one. Double. Actually, no, they'll back away. That hesitation from CLG yep. not immediately moving up there can be the difference. You know, a couple of seconds of DPS time on Baron. Uh, double teleports for Pain Gaming, and Kami's able to come in. Threat of a shockwave. Uh, Rek'Sai is definitely threatening enough. They can burst it down. So CLG don't want to take that chance of throwing away such a huge lead um, and allowing the Baron to be stolen. So they call off their attempt. They play with the necessary respect, but even though we're now 15-5 ahead for CLG, Pain Gaming still have the combo. We saw Origin do it, they were behind too. We saw an earlier fight here, Sir T now on the front line, some Oriana shield here, but look for Annie, look for Diu. Tibbers with Fate's Call or Flash Tibbers with the Oriana ball combined. That's what Pain Gaming are looking for. Science Spartan is looking for Inhibitor. Yeah, it does get the ulti out of Rek'Sai. But isn't going to go all the way in. CLG have done some recent shopping. No double is actually sitting on a big stack of gold, I think. But they are going to start Baron once again. In vision. 
What's, oh. What's changed now that CLG is willing to take the 50-50 compared to before? Maybe they just have to think they have to take it here. They're going to move in. Are they going to get the Smite steal? Ball. In? They're going to keep moving in. Tyrus is going to get 100. Tyrus is good, but Tyrus is getting very low double. Moving up. Pobelta gets the kill. CLG was a ruse all along. Mylon's going to get stunned up out of his crunch. Now Megano has to move out, but next Smithy is low. Kicks on Nakami. They'll take him out. And CLG get what they want. And BRTT chased Zion that whole way down the river. Oh, double is still chasing them. Certainly still going, and Smithy runs in, shoot and draw that from Milo, by Vietnam, BRTT trying to turn it around, but Zion and double it, far too far forward, get a crunch all the way through, Payne as BRTT will die for the ace. And poor shot calling again, Kobe, you shouted, it was under 1.5k health that Baron, Certainly could have easily channeled over and stolen it with a shockwave, and then Payne Game could have disengaged third ways, maybe drop an inhibitor, but they took a very bad fight because Certi and Kami were in position to steal Baron. They were over the wall when Dude flashed Tibbert, so just poor communication. And Zion Spartan, so intelligent there. He's able to uh, gain BRTT's attention. He chases him halfway down the river. There's no Kalista there. Soaks up a lot of damage only because he knows he can teleport right back in with home guards. Cuts off the rest of Pain Gaming, and they're able to take down two inhibitors with that Baron bait. Yeah, CLG get a massive boost there in this game. Is there practically 10,000 gold ahead? They'll steal the blue, they'll go back and recall double from Vampiric. Vampiric accepted a Bloodthirster very quickly. I mean, look right now, the ball's in position. If Sir T goes over, Kami and Sir T have to go all the way around the wall. Dude's doing his job. He can, You can expend your support for a Baron as a support main. I will agree with that. Just sacrifice your life, but get something out of it. Good ulti by Pobelter, by the way, too, because he keeps the Smithy alive for the kick on Kami. Is that not the worst feeling? You go flash Tibbers as Andy. Yes, it got him. And nobody, no damage there, no, no fall off of any sort. Afro move, towing the line there. Mylon does get a great uh, ultimate, and Xerxes actually channeled with the knockup there, but it just was too little too late. Uh, with Zion coming in with the teleport, full bar yep. of health. Yes. PRTT was really happy getting three members pinned into the wall. Runal's fucking on all of them, but yeah. a little too late, as we said, because that's just doing different things. If you want a team fight, sure, they could have won that if Kami and Sir T went around, but they weren't looking to team fight. They were looking to steal, so Pain Game needed to get on the same page with each other. Yeah, Afro also had the unbreakable wall up for the first half of that uh, while they were stunned, so blocked a decent amount of it. And CLG, as a result, getting very close to closing this game out, have one inhibitor left if they want it in the top lane. Dragon number three only, or four, sorry, total, but three for CLG will be up. That's unlikely to be a win condition this game. CLG can do Baron, but right now, they're gonna take this tower and get themselves truly 10,000 gold ahead. And yeah, they can just push him in the top lane, then disengage uh, back to the Baron again, forcing a very, very long distance face check. Look at all those rushes that have been cleared or dewarded by CLG. Double of so unbelievably threatening right now. 909 on Tristana. Has the Quicksilver completed on top of it. Face of the Mountain and Braum to protect him. For Sentinel. Gets killed there by Double If They know a brush are in right now, but. There's a lone ward outside the Baron that can maybe yeah. spot CLG moving in and out of that. So Pain Gaming are just going to rely on the fact that they haven't seen anybody pass there. CLG cutting them off though. Yep, now gonna try and look onto Kami. They want to point. They're gonna move in for it. Zion pumps his ultimate out there from Afro as well as he pumps down the Glacial Fissure. Shockwave is not bad, but Kami will die. Zion low, Milo scoops him oh out of the my. way. But a double kill there for all of us. CLG are gonna run forward. They know they can finish things off. Aggressive flashes, double it goes. Legendary Hero Worlds. And that's gonna be game. CLG will knock it down. They will have a much improved second game. Oh! So yeah, there have been some good plays. That was the good play. Perfectly timed spam. We've been tracking team fights, uh -huh. level ones, but synchronized icon usage is something that we really have to track at this event. And CLG, they take the crown with that one. Yeah, who had a really good one. They were the first to do yep. it with that ace, but.